Hey everyone, I am Dale Campbell and I'm going to give you an overview of Blackmagic's brand new camera they just announced. This is the new Blackmagic Cinema Camera 6K, not to be confused with the Pocket Cinema Camera 6K. They're going back to the original naming convention there of the Cinema Camera 2.5K and the Cinema Camera 4K. So this is in that lineage if you like. According to Grant, this is designed for high-end digital film and there is no real change of form factor from the 6K G2 that we have out at the moment and indeed the rest of the pocket lineup if you like. It's a very similar look. It does, however, have a new full frame sensor, and that is probably the biggest takeaway from this. It's a full frame sensor. This is in a three to two aspect ratio, and according to Blackmagic, the photo sites are larger, which should mean they capture more light, which should mean the image is just uh, better because it's capturing lots more light. Full height sensor also means that it's gonna work with uh, anamorphic much better than any of the current um, sensors do. It is designed for that. You can make use of the whole full height, the open gate of the sensor. Whereas on a lot of the uh, current lineup, we've got a more um, 16 by nine aspect ratio sensor, so it's not as good. There is an optical low pass filter installed as standard on this, and for those who have followed the 12K uh, camera, they'll remember that uh, this came out recently uh, with an update uh, where you could have a different um, filter in there, and that hopefully is gonna mean that they have got everything dialed in specifically for the sensor, and it should give you a better look. Dynamic range is rated at 13 stops. Now this is an interesting one. It records Blackmagic RAW, no surprise there. Blackmagic have been doing this for a good number of years now, but it also records a separate stream as an H.264 proxy. Now this is something they've been quietly working around in the background with DaVinci and the cloud options in order to enable remote editing workflows. So now, rather than having to post-process things when you get back, it's actually recording that in camera so that you can upload the proxies, save time, not have to use your computer to render out proxies, and just generally make things a little bit more efficient. So that's cool for post-production. The L mount is now in and the EF mount is out. That's gonna mean a shorter flange distance um, with that L mount and you can then easily adapt back out to EF or PL if you want. A lot of people felt this was a long time coming. We have been on EF or Micro Four Thirds mounts with the Blackmagic cameras for a while now and then outliers of PL mounts obviously if you're into that. But yeah, we are on the L mount. We are in the L mount Alliance. No mention of internal NDs with this, and I feel that uh, those will have been lost due to the um, flange being a lot shorter than uh, it was before. So yeah, no internal NDs it seems on this camera. It does have dual native ISO, same as a lot of the other pocket camera lineup do, rated at 400 and 3200. And then the frame rates, they're actually respectable. So what you have to bear in mind here is that with 6K open gate, it's not like a widescreen 6K, it's even taller. So you're actually dealing with a much larger, uh, much higher resolution image. So that open gate 6K tops out at 36 frames a second. And then you can go into various different um, crops, if you will, of that sensor, where you get to your higher frame rate. And then if you go to a Super 16 crop, you're going to have the option of getting up to 100 frames a second. And then with an HD, version of that Super 16 crop, you're gonna to get to 120 frames a second. It is just a bunch of numbers that I'm saying here, but on screen, hopefully you're looking at those uh, crops that you're getting and the frame rates that you get for them. Nothing new, uh, this has been happening on most of the cameras that we use uh, day to day for years now. You crop it to the sensor, you get to the higher frame rates. Internal recording is now on CF Express. Get ready to drop some cash on those, but you can still record with the USB-C out to an SSD. So that is welcome uh, for those of you who don't wanna to drop tons of money on internal storage with the CF Express. You can continue to use your rigged SSD on your cage or have you wanna do it. That is good news. It is compatible with existing pocket accessories. Now, I don't know if that's gonna mean full cages and everything from third-party manufacturers, but I think what Grant was talking about was the EVF and the battery grip that they already have. And indeed, the batteries on this are the Sony MPF 570 
type batteries. So yes, stock up on those if you don't already have some. The screen on the back is the same in terms of its movement, I think, as the 6K G2. So it articulates on its own axis, but doesn't flip out or flip all the way over. So if you are hoping to use this as a vlogging camera, it's probably not uh, going to be that easy for you to hold it out and look at your image. You know, it's not that thing. It is rated to 1500 nits of brightness, so it should be pretty good even in uh, bright sunlight. Not as good as some of the monitors are out at the moment, but 1500 nits is respectable. Layout of the buttons looks the same as previous cameras, so I won't really mention too much on that. And the vertical firmware was mentioned, so it has been on the pocket cameras for a little while now. You can flip it and it will use the accelerometers to detect that you have flipped it vertical and then it will write that into the metadata of the file and it'll also flip your user interface and display so that it's just a little bit easier to use. If you are being um, forced to do vertical content, it's gonna make it a little bit nicer for you. Price point, I've only seen in the uh, US dollars, uh, 2595. I assume it's gonna be around the same in pounds, give or take but I will ping that up if I do find out um, in between now and the time this video goes live. Some of the features that we have had on previous pocket cameras and indeed a lot of the Blackmagic camera lineup, but particularly the pocket cameras, have been very closely linked to live production, uh, integrating with the ATEMs. They're trying to streamline this as more of a filming camera. So some of those seem like they've been removed. It might not talk as nicely to the production switches. So they were very careful to mention that at the start. They are trying to focus this on those things. There was no mention of anything to do with autofocus having changed. They did mention that autofocus lenses will work. So I think if you were hoping for a more advanced autofocus system that you can just flick on and forget about everything and it'll track face and stuff, it's not gonna be that. Uh, so you will still need to have first AC or be good at pulling your own focus or potentially exploring one of the LiDAR based systems, which is, uh, I don't know, something's coming a little bit more online now. And I think we'll see more over the next year, but uh, nothing internal. There was no particular mention of IO, but looking at the website, I can see that it is HDMI only. There's no SDI on this and the ports seem very similar to what we've seen on the other pocket cameras. So yeah, no big surprises. The only thing I mentioned here is that where on the pocket cameras we had uh, CFast cards and SD cards, now it is just that single CF Express port and the USB-C is our only way of getting things in and out of the camera in terms of recording. Now, for some of my opinions and first impressions on all of this, I have been using Blackmagic cameras for years, since the original 2.5K through to the current lineup of Ursa G2s that we have that pretty much I'm using on all of my shoots. And let's not forget the Pocket 4K that I'm filming this on. Honorable mention is gonna to go to Ursa 12Ks. I have shot a number of projects on those, uh, did a big project with Lotus where we used four 12Ks over the course of four night shoots. Really cool. I always felt that the camera itself never found its audience. People misunderstood it. The specs really took the headlines, and in my opinion, people focused too much on that technical aspect when the image out of the camera was the thing that actually made it worth talking about, in my opinion. But here we are in 2023. The camera market has been steadily evolving, and I'd be remiss not to mention some of the other heavy hitters out there at the moment. The more affordable end of the market, we have things such as the Sony FX30 and the FX3, various Red Komodo models, Canon C70, R5C, and then we're into things which I'm classing as the, the, the higher end, like the Electra 35s, Mini LF, Red V Raptor, Sony Venice 2, and the new Sony Burano. Burano, have I said that right? Who knows? They're not in the same category as the other stuff. They're far, far more expensive. So where does this new camera sit in that landscape of cinema cameras and who is it gonna be aimed at? This is a tricky one because the price point with Blackmagic cameras always puts them basically below everything else on that list. Having the same form factor as the previous pockets, I think is going to disappoint all of those who were hoping for something that was perhaps a more flagship box camera kind of vibe. And I can sympathize with that, but the biggest positives are the new mount, the new sensor and the internal proxy integrating things neatly for workflows just there. There wasn't a lot of time spent on autofocus. So I'm assuming that this still is not going to compete with the offerings from Sony, Canon, and even Red to some extent, 
on that front. Because we've got that full frame sensor, the obvious comparison has got to be the Sony FX3, VistaVision Komodo, and the Alexa Mini LF, albeit, you know, complete different price point. I guess maybe Sony Venice is up there as well, but really nothing is positioning itself at the same place that Blackmagic is. I think because the price to image quality of Blackmagic is always off the charts, the audience, the audience is always going to be there. There are always going to be people who want to get the best possible image quality and they will forego some of the benefits that perhaps you'd have if you were on an Alexa Mini LF. You know, that there's a bunch of stuff that the Alexa gives you that you will not get on this camera um, in terms of form factor, in terms of how it integrates with production but you're also paying a fraction of the price for that equally. There are other cameras which are at a more similar price point, but you're still gonna find that Blackmagic is offering you things that those cameras do not offer you, whether it's full gate, whether it is uh, the internal raw recording, whether it is that integration with proxies neatly in DaVinci. And that's something that I think that a lot of people can't compete with. I feel that the competition in the cinema camera market is a lot stiffer now than it was a few years ago when the 4K and the original 6K launched. So it's going to be interesting to see how this fits into that. And I don't know, I'm not the one to judge how that's going to pan out. We're just going to have to see how it goes. The footage seems nice enough. I always find it impossible to judge these things because Everything always looks nice. People shoot things and you go, oh yeah, I wish I was out there shooting that gas station at night, you know, with the neon lights and kind of the slightly blue hour look to it. Yeah, sure, I want to shoot that. Does it look good? Yes, it looks good. But until I get the cameras in my hands, until I played with some of those examples, I'm going to download some and have a bit of fiddle with it. I just find it really hard to judge how it actually works. Now, at the back of my head, I'm thinking, the dynamic range here is the thing which I'm most unsure of in the new camera. 13 stops, it's not to be sniffed at, and it probably does 13 stops in a very honest way, but I think I'm used to a little bit more out of the Ursa G2s. So how's that gonna work? Is that going to be something that I really notice or am I smashing the background out so much because I've got a full frame sensor now and I'm shooting open gate on anamorphic and everything's just a sea of bokeh? Is that overexposed background actually gonna matter You know, uh, when, when we're dealing with those kind of shots? It's gonna be a different proposition. I reserve judgment until I've played with it. As for who it's aimed at, there has been a fairly vocal group of users calling for full frame for years and years now. People are obsessed with it. I'm always being a kind of super 35 guy. I never really got hooked on the full frame, you know, uh, Canon DSLR revolution thing. I was all on, <laughs> I suppose the reason why I was on the cheaper cameras, I was on the cheaper Canons at that point, you know, I was on the 550D and stuff. And so I was super 35. So my brain kind of works in super 35. I don't have anything against the different look that you get, but I think that people, it's just complete opinion. People uh, put that look on a pedestal where, you know, the majority of um, cinema has been some form of Super 35 and not the massive, you know, IMAX cameras or the full frame Alexa Mini LFs, you know, it has its place. And I think those people are gonna be really happy that we finally have that with Blackmagic Raw and all the benefits and the cost and everything that uh, Blackmagic is giving you. I think that although I use the current pocket cameras, personally, I'm not the biggest fan of that form factor. I'm concerned about the battery life on that huge sensor. It's one of the reasons why I always favor the Ursas in our lineup because of their reliable gold mount. You know, the fact we can rig them out a little bit better and they seamlessly attach to part of the body and we're not trying to like rig a battery off somewhere. So that's always been my take on it. It just doesn't feel like a camera that I can really get into as much as the Ursus. You know, the Ursus a little bit more well balanced. What I do when you've got a lens on, you could put the handles on the side and I just find myself gravitating to that more. But maybe the full frame look and the anamorphic will be intoxicating when I get to test them out. Who knows, I might be a complete convert. I reserve judgment. All of this is obviously based on the announcement footage and everything that Blackmagic just shared. So 
we will see when I get my hands on it and hopefully that'll be soon. Finally, if you are new to the channel, do have a look around my 60 second cinematography series where I break down shoots that I've done with absolutely no fluff is there, but there are plenty of other long form breakdowns, including the behind the scenes of um, the Lotus cars and Ursa 12K project that I did. That was a mammoth one. We had four 12Ks on that. So if you're interested in this kind of stuff and you want the longer form thing, that is there on this channel. And there's also the 60 second cinematography. There's like 27 minutes of that now, as so you can literally get almost half an hour of intense, just here's the lighting, here's the cameras, here's how we did it uh, with absolutely no filler. Hopefully I'll be able to get my hands on this Blackmagic Cinema Camera 6K at some point in the future, hopefully soon. How's that all gonna look? I'll let you know when I get hold of it. Drop some comments and questions down below and I will stick around in the chat to try and address those as more news comes out.